Hello students, welcome to the third video for Chapter 8 Project Management. Within this video we're going to look at what happens or what needs to happen for us to shorten the project time. So obviously if we shorten the project time it's going to incur costs. So in this uh, section we're looking at various activity costs. So there's a, a, t a time cost trade-off. You want less time, it's going to take more more money, more time. So, as it says there, project can be reduced by assigning more uh, resources to project activities. What we need to be aware of is that we, if we want to shorten the project time, it's going to involve those activities on the critical path. If they're not on the critical path, they already, they have a slack component which means there's already extra time. So shortening activities not in the critical path is not going to shorten the total project time. So you first have to identify the critical path, and then from there we look at what's the best way to actually reduce the project completion time. So we're going to go back to our example of building a house. We have those seven activities. Uh, this is from our first uh, video, first section within this chapter. Uh, there's various uh, activities and there's various uh, times. The, the time element when we first did this was in months. We're changing this to weeks just to make it a little more um, easily understood. So what we're going to do is I'll show you the Excel file that we're using here. Basically here is our normal time. Now as I said, activity one before was um, four months now it's 12 weeks uh, activity two eight weeks two months so forth we have some extra data we have the total the normal cost of each activity in regards to the normal time so our project is going to cost us seventy five thousand dollars if we use the normal time so this was uh, done in um, uh, nine mo uh, nine months, I believe. So if we take, if we don't shorten anything, the project will be done in nine months. It'll cost us seventy five thousand dollars. We have this crash cost time as well. So if we crashed absolutely everything that we could crash, crashing means to shorten, the project would cost us um, one hundred ten thousand dollars. So what we need to do is identify the, the critical pathway, first of all, and then to identify what activities could, should be shortened. So let's go into Jamboard here. We have this. I'm going to draw out the project, the, uh, the network again. I'm going to use the normal time in weeks that we have here. So we have activity one. Let's do this in black. Matching off to activity two. Activity four. Um, this is already drawn for us uh, previously. So it's, this schedule does not include the predecessors, but it's the one that we are familiar with from working on before in our first video. And then we have activity six branching up from there. And then activity seven. I'll put way out there. These will be four and six. So drawing this out, we should be able to understand what the predecessor activities are. Now in red, I'm going to put in the normal time because we need to determine the critical path. Even though the critical path is the same as what we've had before in the first section, we'll draw it out here as well. 0, 12, activity 2 takes 8 weeks, has to start after activity 1. Activity 3 takes 4 weeks, so that's 12 to week 16. Activity 4 and 5, the earliest start time, remember this, and the earliest finish time, basically for activity 4, it has to start after both activities are done. So both activities are done by week 20. Same thing with activity 5 
Activity 4 takes 12 weeks, that's 32. Activity 5 takes 4. 24, 24 weeks for Activity 6, going up to 28. And Activity 7, the earliest it can start is when both activities before it are completed. Activity 4 is completed on 32. So this will be 32, going for 6 weeks, or 4 weeks, to um, to 36 weeks. So our time, our project time, is 36 weeks. Previously it was 9 months. So there's that uh, equality there. Now let's identify the critical path. Critical path, working backwards. It's going to be the same critical path we had in the first section, but we'll just continue this out. Remember, this is the latest start and latest finish. When we're going backwards, it's going to be, um, let's just draw this in here. And we can draw this one. This is 28 to 24. Now for activity 2 and activity 3, when is the latest, the bottom right number, the latest it can finish is basically um, enough time for activity 4 to start on week 20. So this one has to be 20 as well as this. Activity 3 needs to finish, the latest it can finish is week 20 in order for week 4 and 5 to start on time. There's some built-in slot for activity 5 as we'll see when we continue this. And this is going to be, activity 3 is 4, that's 16, and here is activity 1. So our critical path is 1 to 2 to 4 to 7. And I've highlighted these numbers up here as well. And one thing I didn't show Let's go back for one second. This is how it actually get these numbers. Let's go back to Excel. We're going to get those numbers. The total, total allowable crash time is simply the difference between the normal time and the crash time. Basically, we can crash it by five weeks. Activity one the bare minimum, we can only crash down to seven weeks. We can't shorten it anymore. And then we can drag this down. Basically saying activity seven can only be shortened by one week. There's a there's a, um, a total uh, maximum time or minimum time that each activity has to take. The crash cost per week is looking at the difference between the crash cost. Oops change that. The difference in the crash cost and the total cost divided by the total allowable time. That's $400. Oops, we can drag that down and we get the crash cost per week. Some activities cost a lot of money to shorten them. You know, based on the actual activity, there's different resources that have to go into shortening those activities. So these ones, this one, Activity 4 and Activity 7 cost a lot of money to shorten, whereas Activity 5 and 6, they don't cost very much. So one of the things that we look at is we want to, if we want to shorten the time, we want to spend the least amount of money. So we could look at Activity 5 and 6, but Activity 5 and 6 already have a slack. They have a slack of four weeks, the equivalent of one month. So if we were to shorten Activity 5, by one week, we could cost it would cost two hundred dollars, but it's not going to change or reduce our project completion time. So that's why we have to look at the critical path. So these activities I I have highlighted in yellow, those are the activities we're going to start with. So if we want to shorten our activity time, we have to identify the critical path and identify the crash cost per time period, um, which um, as a, as our starting point. So activities one, two, four, and seven, um, we're going to start with a minimum. Of course, uh, we want to spend as, as least the least amount of money. So if we were to crash activity one by one week, we're going to incur an extra four hundred dollars. So what happens 
is that we would have to go through this um, this network and basically we have shortened activity one from 12 weeks to 11 weeks so let's take a look at this let's see if this actually works so the only difference is activity one takes 11 weeks instead of um, oops, I don't want that in black there. Let's draw this out first of all. Two. Just drawing out the same way I did before. Four and five. Like that. Connecting these ones. Activity six is over here. And then activity seven after activities four and six. Now, the only difference in our time is activity 1 takes 11 weeks instead of 12. So as we're going up, using the same time periods for all the other activities, this one took 12 weeks, and so now this is 19 to 31. 5 is 4 weeks, so this is going to be 19 to 23. 23, this is 4 weeks, 27. Activity 7 has to start after both activities are completed. So activity 7 starts when activity 4 is finished, so at 31 weeks. And this goes on for 4 weeks, 35. So our completion time is now 35 weeks. Critical path, we could identify a critical path. Perhaps it's changed, it can change but we've only changed one activity and there's enough slack in the other activities uh, so we understand, we can understand that our critical path is still going to be 1, 2, 4, and 7 but we have now added an extra um, $400 to our project. Is it worth it shortening it by one week um, and paying $400 to do so? Now what we can do, go back here, we can say well what happens if we shorten it by in one extra week or another week. Um, one thing we have to be aware of is that there is a limit. We can only shorten activity one by five weeks. So if we shorten it by uh, three weeks, um, you know, it could affect the critical path. So it's best to do this kind of one time period at a time. So basically drawing this out and then drawing it out if we were to shorten activity one by one more week instead of 11 it will be 10 and seeing um, if the critical path is going to be different so it takes a lot of time to do so and there's different software that would be available to uh, go through this rather time consuming process but it's a good introduction into uh, the costs that are incurred by shortening an activity you know we can't just assume that we're going to shorten activity one by five weeks with nothing else changing um, but we've, we've proven that we can shorten activity one by one week and every and the only thing that changed is the project completion time and it's costing us an extra four hundred dollars so that is um, our quick overview of chapter eight project management